Hi, my name is Savannah. I have made a couple of other videos in this exact outfit, in this exact sitting um, at this point. I just want to disclaim that um, I, I do have other clothes. Uh, I just have expected this process to be mentally uh, tolling to talk and then I will after this figure out how to edit and upload these things um, and in the event that I am put off of it all <laughs> before um, I can circle back and make more I just wanted to get out some of my initial some of my initial thoughts um, all at once so I, as I've spoken to in my previous videos, I'm going to be talking about um, neurodivergence and autism and self-diagnosis as a valid form of diagnosis um, and medical gaslighting and biases against my neurotype um, that gate that are gatekeepy. Um, so I am only speaking about my experience. I don't have like a disclaimer line in my head right now, but I just want to say I would imagine this has happened to other people. Um, so I just want to name that, but this is just my experience and I hope it's not anyone else's but I wouldn't be surprised if it is because people don't get listened to a lot when they self-advocate with a medical professional who they are seeking a diagnosis from or help or just to be heard. Um, and there are tons of great medical professionals out there, of course, um, but there are also others who have biases that um, that harm people. So, yeah, just want to name that. Um, my experience with seeking an autism diagnosis was almost, um, and I have my iPad here with my digital version of my uh, neurodevelopmental assessment results as well as my journal um, so if I'm looking down over here I'm not totally distracted I'm just referencing something um, and I've gotten myself off track so I'll add that to my list of reasons that I am autistic um, but I, about two years ago, to the day, pretty much, um, sought out a diagnostic evaluation with someone who took my insurance. That was my top priority. Second priority was someone who seemed, from their bio, like we would vibe. Um, and I, it wouldn't be a weird it would hopefully not be um, a weird fit um, and I would feel comfortable engaging with them and opening up to be my authentic self um, to the best of my ability. Not always easy, um, but yeah, I, I felt semi comfortable throughout the process. Um, I know for me in certain settings, I feel more, I feel like I'm able to like perform as, you know, a normal person better, um, than others and medical appointments, therapy, um, work, those are places that I feel that way. Um, it is not at all generalized across the board. Uh, it 
I I don't really know how to describe the way that I can like switch that on and off. Um, it's bizarre. It is exhausting. Um, but anyway, I think that worked against me by maintaining eye contact um, with the diagnostician, um, the clinical psychologist. Um, and coming really prepared, coming really prepared um, with a story and a vision to make my case for, this is how I know that I'm autistic. This is how I have known for so long that I'm autistic. Not to mention the fact that my dad and child are autistic. So the way that I perceive the world, um, apparently she knows better than me. She thinks I'm neurotypical. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, off the top, I disclose diagnoses and related conversations with mental health professionals, um, including um, I have diagnoses of PTSD, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, um, bipolar 2, uh, major depressive disorder, um, and then it's not in the DSM, but my PTSD has been labeled by multiple mental health professionals as complex PTSD. Um, and then I also later got an ADHD diagnosis. Um, so there are pieces of this autism painting that I have, I had been um, outlining for her that do align with ADHD, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, this Venn diagram of neurodivergence and it's hard to discern, but I know myself and people who are watching this who know themselves, who whether they have a diagnosis or not, you, you know. <laughs> um, and getting that diagnosis and being seen and heard and having that validation of meeting criteria um, is really validating. So that's what I was after. I, I would, if I couldn't find someone that I thought was going to be a good fit for the process, I wouldn't have scheduled. Um, it, it was distressing. It was four hours. Yeah, no, not four hours. M much more than that. It was four different days with like two, three, four hour appointments um, each. And you know, you're being, you're jumping through these hoops and playing these games and recounting things like you're trying to to you're being tested on how your brain works and how um, you operate and I'm curious others experiences with being being tested after growing up and being conditioned to behave certain ways and and perform certain performances and say the right scripts and look the right way and you know try to use gestures in the right way and mirror people um, and mask essentially and then how do you just take all of that off 100% effectively in order to be seen for, you know, 
to, to showcase um, that this is a diagnosis that applies to you. Um, so much of my identity as someone who is neurodivergent, who is autistic, um, is internal. Like, I mean, everything. <laughs> but it is more obvious in certain settings and situations and under certain amounts of pressure, like, you know, my shell cracks. Um, and you can see the the real situation going on in here. Um, not that I am more autistic at home when no one's around versus, you know, it's, it's not that, it's just, I knew I was at an appointment and I had a really hard time not trying to be helpful like it, it was just really hard um but the thing that she clung on to my friend is complex ptsd i think between i think that you know i caught she specifically in my report wrote down that because i maintained eye contact and because i could reciprocate conversation with her. This diagnosis does not apply to me. Um, and she notes that I do meet the criteria, but because um, of complex PTSD, there's no way to discern which is which. So she's not going to assign a that like this diagnosis because it can be like these symptoms or red flags can be um and I that was sarcasm like these characteristics of who I am as a human being um they can be explained uh, apparently uh by complex PTSD um so if I could time travel and have a have a different, um, you know, life story, then we could see, um, then we could see that I still passed the test and yeah, I don't know. It's very frustrating. I walked away from the experience really upset and felt really invalidated um, and kind of was like, maybe it is, you know, complex PTSD and like, whoa, what a trip that I've been, I was like, so sure. Um, and maybe her, she was like, what a relief. She's walking away thinking, you know what? Great. I'm not autistic. Thank you. Like, I can rid myself of, you know, that worry that I had. I don't know, you know, I maybe I've overthought it, but I, I don't think her, her takeaway has to be my takeaway. Um, like looking back, it, it doesn't mean she took away who I am or that my entire life and understanding of myself as a person um, has changed or needs to change. Um, I know myself, so. Yeah, uh, and the reason that I'm wanting to speak about these things and, and share is because without having seen other folks talk about self-diagnosis um, as something that is valid and worthy of respect and um, and notability uh, with without having seen that representation I would have just totally put it in her hands as like, you're the expert, you're the professional. Um, 
therefore what you say goes and is fact. But thank you to everyone who has ever shared their story um, that I have happened to happen upon. <laughs> um, because it has made me feel like I'm the expert on me and I'm the professional <laughs> uh, of knowing what's up in my brain and body. Um, and I don't want to discount someone who has spent years and years in educate in being educated to diagnose. Um, and, but you know, sometimes you get it wrong as everyone does. And, um, it's unfortunate, but, um, I empathize with her struggling to discern between masking and, um, and autism and her struggle to discern between complex PTSD, which isn't even in the DSM, um, and autism spectrum disorder. So, um, that's kind of my story, but if it is helpful to hear about just some, just a short list of what autism, um, as an identity feels like for me, I have like a bit of a list uh, of <clears throat> just some of the things of what that means to me, but I'm sure there will be a part two and part three as I am sure as soon as I'm done recording, I'm certain that I will um, remember or think of I'm like, oh yeah, that's another reason I'm autistic or yeah, that's another, you know, neurodivergent thing that I do and feel. Um, and then I also went through my report, it's 12 pages long and highlighted some pieces um, that she noted um, in my report um, that when you look in the DSM at PTSD, it got nothing to do with that. <laughs> but what do I know? Um, okay, so I didn't hit all the points of in, in my little list in my journal of all the things, um, or like if you Google autism, um, or, you know, characteristics of being autistic or what have you, um, I don't hit all those points in this list. Um, so much applies to me, which is why I was seeking out a diagnosis. Um, but yeah, just a little list of things that are kind of in addition to what you might classically think of, um, whatever, I'll quit prefacing it and just get right into it. Uh, delayed auditory processing, being justice minded or like, I, I feel like I, I do a solid job at holding complexity and nuance, but when it comes especially to identity and equity, um, whether it's disability or race or class or um, queerness or what have you, gender, um, I get really uh, rigid in right and wrong, black and white, like, and, uh, and it's intense. Um, phone calls are really hard for me, um, especially if I know I'll be waiting um, to schedule an appointment or to speak to someone 
talking to people that I can't see is harder than talking to people I can see. I would prefer to message or email or text. Um, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta call and I will make notes or write myself a little script, um, and sweat <laughs> and shake. Uh, it's really stressful. Um, eye contact is difficult for me. It makes me uncomfortable. It's hard for me to think and listen if I am telling my, like, you know, trying to discern, like, am I doing the right ratio of looking and looking away and looking, like, trying to find tricks of ways I can maintain eye contact but not be connecting our souls like that because that's a lot. Um, I, when I get overwhelmed, especially like sensory over overstimulated um, with overwhelm, I will physically and, and verbally shut down. Um, and I have a hard time articulating or responding um, to what I need or what's wrong. Um, and it's hard for those around me. Um, Routine and and having a clean space are really important to my mental well-being, but I struggle a lot with upholding both. Um, I'm really sensitive to physical pressure um, and sound, especially overlapping sound, um, like when multiple sounds like, you know, TV and talking or someone's watching a video and someone else is talking or it's a big group of people or a big room of people. Um, fabric, certain fabrics uh, and textures of items are nauseating. Um, microfiber, you. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's more than just that. Um, I'm really sensitive to food textures and um, as, uh, like the sensory experience of certain foods. Like, for example, I have a really hard time with things like bananas or avocado. Like, I will totally gag um, if I try to swallow those things um, or mushrooms. Um, and then with crunchier foods, if I'm eating those and I'm not completely alone in a space, I cannot, like, engage in any way because I am so focused on, like, am I chewing too loudly? Am, like, can I even hear, can, can anyone hear anything because I'm chewing so loudly or, like, am I being weird like am I <laughs> I don't know like it's just there's so much overthinking happening um so soft foods are helpful um I'm I oh another one was uh related to sound like in school if I had like a tickle in my throat or you know getting over a cold or something I also have asthma so like coughing happens um but if I needed to cough or clear my throat or make any sound at all I would try with all my might to not and I would just be like my eyes were watering I'm turning red I'm like choking and gagging um trying to stay silent and and it would feel like I'm dying a slow death, um, <laughs> which I ended up seeing a meme of uh, years ago. And I was like, other people were trying not to cough and dying like that. It's crazy. I love the internet. Being in an era where there can be this kind of representation is so cool. It's so cool. Um, sometimes if I'm needing more stimulation and I'm less sensory averse that can look like um having 
noise canceling headphones on with like I like um, what's called brown noise more than white noise um, and I find myself like scrolling on my phone like not just like doom scrolling but like scrolling fast where you can't even see or read um, on social media like that visual stimulation is is nice um, uh, I feel emotions very very deeply um, I feel like pretty chronically depressed and burnt out um, forming sentences or telling stories verbally is really hard for me um, it, I, and then I end up overthinking, like, trying to recount the script of what all I said and how I got it all wrong, um, and how I should have, like, how I could have said something better or should have said something differently so it made sense, and, um, um, writing and messaging and texting and emailing is easier for me than the alternative because I can process and think and like visually see and have mental feedback for myself before I like put something out there. Um, and um, One thing that is mentioned on in like some lists about what makes autism autism is a difficulty in reading other people's emotions or body language or facial expressions or gestures. Um, and this is just another piece of that kind of masking, conditioning, learning how to survive kind of sphere, but um, I feel really hyper aware of those pieces and <clears throat> for a long time I was like, I'm just really good at reading people, but it's because I studied people and how they move and the micro facial expressions and what body language means to the point where sometimes I'm like wait I'm I've just realized I haven't been listening um, or like being present in this moment because I'm so focused on trying to make up for that gap in what probably otherwise would be difficulty reading um, body language and facial expressions, um, tone of voice, all of that. By hyper-focusing on that, I miss out on all the other things, like what is actually being said or talked about, um, what I'm actually supposed to be doing or preparing in my head to respond to, like, can make active listening pretty hard, even though it's something I pr pride myself in or I like to tell myself I'm good at. <laughs> um, and I do care about it, but it's a lot to juggle all at once. And then, um, and this is just such a short list because obviously when every single part of your identity is enmeshed in your neurotype, like, it doesn't fit on a page. <laughs> but um, some kind of funny things when I was thinking about like what special interests and hyper fixations have looked like over the years. Um, most recently I am really into um, reading about and and freaking out about uh, the climate crisis that we are all collectively up against. 
um, natural disasters, where I am, sea level wise, uh, fault lines, what's going on underneath me, um, where the Lahar paths of, you know, Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens and whatever else, um, all of that scares the heck out of me. Um, and I am learning so much about it and I can't stop reading like prepper books by Republicans, which is unfortunate, um, but I am checking them out from the library, so I'm not supporting them. Um, I'm not like quite, a, I'm not quite like prepping, um, but I mean, I do have a life straw, so I'm not not. <laughs> um, uh, before that, I was really, really into contemporary poets and poetry and writers of today. <laughs> um, and I got a bachelor's in English and a, an MFA in creative writing, um, and I wrote like really quickly, like hundreds of um, poems and personal essays and short stories that got published like, like probably over a hundred um, in different literary journals and magazines. Um, I was just really into it and I couldn't stop. I was like a machine, I swear. Um, and then I was like, you know what, I'm kind of over it. I'm gonna switch to volcanoes and earthquakes and tsunamis and hurricanes and tornadoes because that has a much better outcome for me. It's a much better creative outlet. Um, foolish. Anyway, I'd like to get back into writing um, because I got student loans to look at and I'm not going to make, you know, um, money from writing. Um, that can go towards said payment, but that was really expensive. <laughs> so I'd rather it not just be a special interest that dies. Um, yeah. Um, as a kid, I was very into reading and studying everything I could get my hands on. Um, any documentary, any book, anything on the internet related to the Titanic and the Holocaust. Um, I just, I knew everything there was to know. And the first one and the most obsessive of all when I was maybe eight, nine, ten-ish, um, was knowing everything that anyone could ever know about Marilyn Monroe, which is both autistic and gay. <laughs> um, which I will be making a video about that intersection um, at some point. Um, yeah, but that's, those are just some things that I've written down, um, that came to mind when I'm like, what is my autistic experience? Um, I don't know that I really need to get into a lot of what this lady spoke to, um, but... She talks about my difficulties with social functioning, communication, sensory processing, emotion regulation, executive functioning, and daily living skills. Um, my obsessions, my repetitive behaviors, restricted interests, difficulty with transitions and changes, um, especially coping with changes in plans, um, my having safe foods, such as eating the same yogurt brand and flavor every single morning for like 
five or six years now, and there was something else before I started hating whatever that was. Um, mirroring other people in social settings, having really low um, social motivation, um, being overly sensitive to social slights, having significant anxiety about how I'm being perceived, um, reciprocal conversation, uh, nuance, like, and kind of being on a spectrum of either dominating a conversation or not speaking in the conversation, um, over explaining myself, um, and let's see what else. She goes into a lot of my more ADHD aspects. Um, she said that I used complex speech, did not exhibit echolalia, did not exhibit stere stereotyped or idiosyncratic speech. There were no concerns noted with my speech, neither intonation, volume, rate, rhythm, um, but that there were um, some pieces with receptive language that were on the lower range um, than expressive and written language, and that was primarily weighed down by concerns related to auditory processing and attention. Um, and she goes into what great eye contact I made and how, uh, what a range of facial expressions that I demonstrated during our time together. Um, and uh, let's see, engaging in less sensory seeking behaviors, low registration of stimuli, um, more, sens more sensory sensitivity, and sensation avoidance, um, higher tendency to avoid sensations as it can be easily overwhelming, um, bothered by sensory stimuli, mm. yeah, so yeah, that's Kind of just a, a quick recap on some of the things she noticed um, even though it was all for nothing um, and I just wanted to give a quick plug also to um, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network which you can go to their website, autisticadvocacy.org. Um, if you are watching this and you are hearing things about autism that differ from your understanding of autism um, or neurodivergence in general, I would recommend going to this website and reading, like, autistic people's experience and definition of what autism is um, and uh, yeah I I'll read a little bit from their page called about autism autism is a developmental disability that affects how we experience the world around us autistic people are an important part of the world Autism is a normal part of life and makes us who we are. Autism has always existed. Autistic people are born autistic and we will be autistic our whole lives. Autism can be diagnosed by a doctor, but you can be autistic even if you don't have a formal diagnosis. Because of myths about autism, it can be harder for autistic adults autistic girls and autistic people of color to get a diagnosis, but anyone can be autistic regardless of race, gender, or age. 
There is no one way to be autistic. Some autistic people can speak and some autistic people need to communicate in other ways. Some autistic people also have intellectual disabilities and some autistic people don't. Some autistic people need a lot of help in their day-to-day -day lives and some autistic people only need a little help. All of these people are autistic because there is no right or wrong way to be autistic. All of us experience autism differently, but we all contribute to the world in meaningful ways. We all deserve understanding and acceptance. So that's nice to read. <laughs> That wasn't in my report, and uh, I don't think that that is a website that was read by the individual who diagnosed me, or who did not diagnose me, geez, um, who assessed me. Um, and that's a shame. There, there definitely needs to be more um, research and time spent by people who have people's lives in their hands and if I like what if I had been in a in a space where that was my you know final straw of being invalidated as a person and you know that's just really dangerous to to have these biases and not be working to actively dispel them in yourself um so I know who I am I hope you know who you are I hope that more people in this field um, do better and and really question what they are recommending and diagnosing um, before they do or before they do not because I I understand but um, it's damaging and, uh, yeah, it's, it's not good to, to make assumptions, um, or, or feel that an assumption cannot be made. And everything I just said there at the end um, probably didn't make any sense to you because it doesn't make any sense to me either because uh, that is um, some that's a sentence I'll be thinking about later when I'm trying to sleep and wishing I didn't put this on the internet um, but yeah uh, I'm gonna make another video soon about ADHD and my executive functioning or dysfunctioning um and I can also share some of my like favorite sensory fidgets and toys and um show my noise canceling headphones um and uh kind of give some plugs for some brands of headphones and noise blockers that I like, um, and, <clears throat> um, yeah, I forget what else, but, um, I also wanted to say in this, and I'll go into this more in another video about hearing loss and being hard of hearing, I, um, I am hard of hearing. I am, uh, I, my hearing deteriorates over time. Um, and I rely a lot on, uh, lip reading and captions and asking people to speak up, um, and having to remind myself to speak up because I can't hear myself, uh, or like my volume. Um, at in in a way that is what um people with normal hearing levels um we're not on the same page there um i have hearing aids uh but i'm really bad at wearing them because of my sensory 
situation where I put these things in and I can hear way too much and it's horrible. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm trying to figure out uh, still, but yeah, I don't know if there's, I, I would, I would be, ugh, if someone's watching this that's hard of hearing, um, and autistic and knows what I'm talking about, that would just be, that would be so cool to find someone to connect with on that, um, but yeah, if anything in here spoke to you, I would love to hear from you. Um, I want to find other channels if, if anyone um, watching this has channels um, or creators or whatever that you'd recommend that I check out. Um, I just want to build community and connect with people and learn from other people and feel more validated than I do right now. Um, but in the meantime, I will be advocating for myself, to myself, and to the internet. But thank you for watching. I'm really bad at closing up these videos and saying goodbye. So I'm going to close this up and say goodbye. And thank you. And I hope you liked um, not being able to see my eyes and just seeing my ring light because I don't like eye contact, okay? Bye.